it's Bernice. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a fourth year medical student who is also um, doing a master's in public policy degree and going to be a doctor in a few months. Ah, uh, it's been a long journey. Um, today, I am going to be talking about taking a year off during medical school and pursuing something, in my case, another degree, potentially research or other things. Some would say, you're doing med school, you're doing this thing for four years already, why would you make this path any longer than it needs to be? But it is becoming very, very common to take an extra year. It used to be that 90% of people who entered medical school got in and out in four years, um, but that number is now actually down closer to 80%. And there's a myriad of reasons why people are not finishing their entire medical degrees in four years. And one of the most common reasons actually is doing these degrees, among other things. Some of the most common dual degrees include the Master's in Public Health, so the master's in business administration, master's in science. The actual degree that I'm doing, this is the master's in public policy and the master's in public administration. This one is a lot less common than some of the other ones that I mentioned, but it is a growing field. The reason I chose to do it is I knew that I wanted to do health systems work in my career. I wanna take the things that I see with my patients day to day when I'm working in the emergency room, notice the things that are healthcare failures, things that we're not doing optimally for our patients, and create policies that address some of those things. Um, I felt like the Masters of Public Policy was going to be a great way to go about it because I'm in the room with a lot of different people, people from the environmental sector, transportation, education, so many different sectors, and I'm able to hear from them because all of those things converge and affect the health of my patients. The key thing to remember for these masters that you do during medical school is that yes, there is a lot of learning that happens inside of the classroom, but a lot of the learning happens outside of the classroom. So in my case, for example, I got the opportunity to work on the transition team of the governor in my home state, which was amazing. And in, in no other case, I would not have had the opportunity to see what state government is like how health policy moves at, at the state government level and, and have that level of access and hands-on experience. And I was able to do that through a fellowship at my school. And so that's been a really fun um, and just a, a, a great way to think and push myself a little further to, to think systems-minded in addition to the clinical education that I'm getting. Usually people who go for the MPH are doing things like epidemiology or maybe biostatistics. Um, in some cases they're doing um, health systems work and things like that. Um, people who do the MBA, there's a lot of different reasons. Some of them are interested in doing perhaps hospital administration later in their life. Um, some want to be involved in management. Um, others, maybe they are interested in owning their own practice and they want to have the skills to be able to operate that business on their own. Um, and then there's this big emerging field of in healthcare innovation and medical technology. And so people enter that degree uh, to get the acumen to be able to enter some of those markets. Another degree that I mentioned is the Master of Science. And so these degrees are very variable. There's Master's in Science and actually Master's of Art. Some people will get um, degrees in things like nutrition or even um, data science, or some people will do things like ethics. And I have friends who've done all of them and, and it, it totally depends on your interests and what are the things that really motivate you and the things that you wanna do in your own career. Those are things where you can really become a subject matter expert on those topics. And some people will go ahead and just take this whole year off and not actually pursue the master's degree. But there's a lot of different reasons why people would take a year off from medical school in order to do research. Sometimes people are trying to apply to very, very competitive residencies, things like dermatology, urology, neuroscience. Some of these degrees have in order to match into these specialties, the expected research output is so high that people don't feel like they're able to do the amount of research and get the amount of publications that they need while they're in medical school, doing medical school coursework and rotations. And so they end up taking that year off and pursuing different research opportunities. And 
getting the number that they need in order to match into some of these competitive specialties. Other reasons that people do research, it might be it's something that you're very passionate about and you want to take extra time to really delve into that topic. And so before medical school ends is actually a really good opportunity to do that because you might not have the time to really delve into those things whenever you're in residency because that's such a hectic training time. More on taking a year off and not pursuing a degree. This is also a great opportunity. I have friends that have done incredible things that have gone and worked on political campaigns or worked in governor's offices and instituted policies or been fellows at different places, people who are working in criminal justice because they know that they want to work at the intersection of those those two. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can spend that year. Most commonly people will take these years off after their third year. So after you've done your core clinical rotations um, and kind of taken some of your major board exams, then you'll take a step out, do this either this master's or do clinical research or um, perhaps go work at an internship or do something like that and then come back for their fourth year to finish and apply for residency during that time. Um, less commonly what some people will do is after their second year, after they've done all of the classroom work, then they'll go and do that year off. By the time they come back from their master's then they'll um, go in and, and just do their clinical rotations. I think there's pros and cons to both. I, as somebody who I ended up doing my master's after my third year of medical school. I really liked that decision because I was able to come into my master's with a lot of perspective because I had already spent a year seeing patients, taking care of people in the hospital, seeing some of what the healthcare failures were from a very, very proximate level. And by doing that, I was able to really delve in and decide what are the things that I want to study in my master's. And so I've taken things like urban policy making. I've looked into critical race theory and because I've noticed a lot of the the, the disparities that I noticed. Um, I've, I've done different healthcare delivery courses and just really had a more critical eye, I think. And so that's why I personally think it's, it's better after the third year, but people have different um, reasons and um, everybody's circumstance is gonna be different. Another reason some people will take this year or more off during medical school is it could look better in your residency applications. Now, I'm not going to say that that's always the case. I can't unilaterally say it always helps with residency, but it does add a compelling dimension to your medical school journey. And so if you have a compelling reason why you did it and you feel like it, it makes you a more holistic person, then programs will notice that and it could definitely help your case. Some people will apply for these dual degree programs immediately when they're applying for medical school. So there's a lot of schools that offer MDMPH programs or MDMBA programs, et cetera. And so you just indicate in your application when you're applying that you intend to take five years and, and do an additional year to do that master's. Another route is once you've already started medical school in the middle, and this is the route that I took, you during your third year of medical school or second year depending on when you want to take the time off you go ahead and apply for the programs and indicate that you're interested a lot of times it's going to be easier to do the program at your home institution meaning wherever you go to medical school doing the masters at the same place um, but it's not impossible to go out so i am doing my masters at an institution that is different from where i'm going to medical school i personally did that because the program that i was looking at um, the master's in public policy was not offered at my home institution is one thing and then i also had some geographical reasons why i wanted to be in this area um, just for personal reasons and so that kind of drove my decision to look at institutions outside of my medical school it just gets a little bit more tricky because when you apply through your home institution there's sometimes default funding available to MD students, um, such as at, at my medical school, for example, um, their MD students, there's a pool of money that is offered to them as a scholarship if they do the MPH and it's kind of shared among the students. Um, whereas if you go out, you're going to have to seek those funding opportunities on your own. Definitely seek those funding opportunities. I applied for dozens and dozens of scholarships to make sure that taking this year off would not be a major financial burden for me and I'm really happy that I ended up taking that route. One of the big arguments for people who don't think that you should take a year off before med school is that 
you can do it in residency um, or you can do it while you're in fellowship. And there is some credence to this. Some residency programs will actually um, give you some tuition support. You'll go to school part time um, while also doing your fellowship. The role of waiting until residency or fellowship is you'll probably have a much clearer vision of the skills that you want to get. It can be really challenging if you go and you invest time and in some cases money in doing some of these degrees and you're not exactly sure what, it's, what you want to do with it even. So waiting a little bit can have that benefit. I think just one thing to consider if you go that route is life tends to get a little bit more hectic later. Unforeseen circumstances can always happen. It's just it's hard to plan for something later when you don't don't really know. Also not every program offers that so you would have to match at a place that offers that sort of tuition reimbursement. That being said, as I mentioned in my how to get into medical school video, some people do their master's before medical school. So I have a few friends who did an MPH before medical school and then started medical school and so they don't feel like they need to take any more time off. The best thing about taking this year off is that you you get a chance to take a step outside of the beautiful but hectic world that is medicine and reflect. Take a, a breath from the sometimes what can feel like a pressure cooker of medical school of rotation after rotation after exam after exam. For me it gave me a lot of clarity. I know that I'm going into residency which I just applied for so yay. Um, I know that I'm going into residency with fresh eyes. Um, and just a fresh mind about what um, I have to bring to the table and what I want to get out of the experience. Let me know what other things might be helpful to you guys. I will be very soon um, taking you on a day or perhaps a week in my life in graduate school. Thank you so much for all of the support. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe and also hit the bell notification so you can find out the next time that I upload. I will see you guys next time. Bye.